We got a few minutes waiting for the chief to park his car and come up. So we're all right. Cool. We're in good shape. Hey, man, how are you? Man, this is like old home week. I know, isn't it crazy? What's up, brother? <laughs> It's uh, COVID. Do you have it? Do you yeah, have it? I still have it. Seven months later. No kidding. I didn't know. Yeah, I was in the hospital. Oh, I didn't know. No bueno. Not bad. Take it.
Good afternoon and thank you for being here today. Uh, I'm pleased to announce that we have some uh, significant uh, information to give in the uh, investigation into the death of Betsy Faria. Uh, but before we get started, I wanted to thank the Lincoln County Sheriff Rick Harrell uh, and the City of St. Charles Police Chief Ray Jinks for joining me here today, uh, specifically with uh, Chief uh, Jinks. Um, as we came in in 2019 and we started to work this case, um, the chief was more than willing to help uh, work with us. He agreed to house our evidence. Uh, he uh, gave us all of his facilities, provided us with every amount of resource that we needed in order to work this case. Uh, and specifically with Sheriff Harrell when he came in uh, six months ago, Sheriff Harrell made this case a priority for him. Uh, he put all of his best detectives on this case. We worked it diligently, uh, and I'm happy to say that six months later, uh, they uh, were able to come to a resolution that we were able to present today. So as you may know, I'm here to announce that we have filed uh, murder charges in the first degree against Pamela Hupp in the stabbing death of Betsy Faria. We will be seeking the death penalty in this case. I do not take lightly the decision to pursue the death penalty but this case stands alone in its heinousness and depravity, such that it shocks the conscience. For a decade, this case has loomed large as a dark cloud over Lincoln County. And in late December 2018, as I was sworn in at the, as the prosecuting attorney here in this spot, I knew we had to work diligently to begin a thorough review of the facts surrounding Betsy's death. It's an obligation I owe to the family of Betsy Faria as well as to the citizens of this county. After a complete and comprehensive review and investigation, I came to the conclusion that beyond a reasonable doubt, Pamela Hupp killed Betsy Faria, and I believe her motivation was simple, for greed. Just four days prior to Betsy's death, Pam Hupp became the sole beneficiary of Betsy Faria's $150,000 life insurance policy. Pamela Hupp, the facts in this case are quite simply indisputable. Pamela Hupp was the last person to see Betsy alive. Cell phone records indicate that she was at or near the home at the time of the death. She knew that Betsy's husband would not be home that night. She lied about her whereabouts. She lied about the details. And lastly, she murdered an innocent man in cold blood to prevent herself from being considered a suspect. The probable cause statement attached to charging documents outline in great detail an extremely compelling circumstantial murder case, one that is very difficult to deny. Yet prosecutors and investigators denied it all the same. Sadly, all of these facts were available to prosecutors at the beginning. Even while Betsy's husband was twice prosecuted for her death, this was one of the poorest examples of investigative work that I, as well as my team, have ever encountered, driven largely by ego, working toward an agenda rather than truth. And because of this, I'm also announcing today that we are launching an investigation into the potential prosecutorial and police misconduct in the Faria investigation. During the course of my investigation into Betsy Faria's death, I came across information that could potentially lead to criminal prosecution. Broken down into two simple parts, the allegations in the federal petition for the violations of Mr. Faria's civil rights 
were largely corroborated by our investigation. It's clear to me that investigators made up their minds early into Betsy's death and that they never once considered Pamela Hupp as a suspect, despite overwhelming evidence. The prosecutor jumped to an initial rush to judgment and came to their conclusion too early. That investigation was mismanaged from the beginning. Russell Faria was the primary suspect in Betsy's death, yet he had four alibi witnesses, no blood on him despite a gruesome murder scene, cell phone towers along with video evidence at two separate locations put him elsewhere at the time of her death. His alibi was corroborated by this evidence. Most concerning, however, is that information came to my attention from three separate and independent sources that witnesses were asked to lie on the stand by the prosecutor in that case. Shortly after the acquittal, it came to my attention during our investigation that a destruction order had been drafted by the sheriff's office shortly after the acquittal of Russ Faria, which would have destroyed all of the physical evidence in this case. This is very troubling to me. I believe in transparency, and the citizens of Lincoln County need to know that no one here is above the law, not prosecutors, not police officers. I will be conducting this investigation along with Sheriff Harrell. Uh, we expect that we will finish this internal investigation by early December. I cannot stress enough how important it is that we have full and complete transparency. Because of that, after my investigation is final, the Sheriff and I will produce a report on our findings and release them to the public. At that point, it is possible criminal charges could be filed. I don't know where this investigation will go, but I will take it wherever it leads me. My only goal here today is to establish confidence and to restore faith in the Lincoln County justice system. I'd like to thank everybody for making it out today. And with that said, I can take a few questions. Were charges um, in the investigation into, into the investigation of the case, would that include possibly the prosecutors, not just investigators? Certainly. Uh, We'll look into that once the facts develop a little more. Uh, we'll, we'll be able to see uh, whether there's anything that we can charge. What I can confidently say is that if anyone had perjured themselves on this case, perjury in a murder prosecution carries uh, as class A felony. Um, there's no statute of limitations that's associated with that. The facts in the probable cause statement to a layperson were <coughs> overwhelming with just a point toward Pam Huff. Comment on how in the world professional prosecutors and investigators could have missed what a layperson could see? Um, to me, it felt as if this was um, confirmation bias in its purest form, that they had made their decision. Uh, this was largely driven by ego, that once they had made their decision, I could confidently say they weren't interested in finding any other evidence that pointed anywhere else. So the only evidence they ever wanted to look at was anything that they could possibly try to use, manufacture, conceal in order to make the prosecution against Russ Faria. Uh, at that point, uh, after the case had gone far enough during the first trial and we get to the point of a second trial, uh, I think investigators and prosecutors then doubled down because they knew how deep they had gotten. Uh, and at that point, you have to believe that they had to be concerned that their own civil liability was on the line, and certainly it was. And they got hit with a $2 million settlement not because anybody did a fantastic job. The people behind the possible destruction of evidence, are they still working for Lincoln County? And how was that discovered? Uh, not to my knowledge, none of the actors that I've discussed are currently working with the sheriff's office. Uh, but it was discovered. Um, actually, I believe, Chris, you uh, caught it when we had uh, answered uh, a sunshine request regarding some of the collateral information. Uh, but one of my investigators who was working through my office, who was helping me put the case together, uh, spent a voluminous amount of time uh, gathering, gathering documents and evidence, put that together, and then flagged it and said, Mike, I, I think we have a problem. At that point, once we saw that, uh, is when we had requested that um, the city of St. Charles hold our evidence because we thought that potentially it could be compromised. Do you think there may have been others that were wrongfully accused and convicted? And are you looking into any of those cases with those previous investigators and what I can say is that the sheriff and I have met. Uh, we expect to work diligently 
to try to uh, make a comprehensive review. Obviously, there was a change in the law recently that gives the prosecutor the ability to take a look, uh, a new look at those cases to see if there was anything that was wrongful. Uh, so I do expect that we will be working diligently to re-review anything that could potentially have been wrongful. Actually, I do have one other question. What you got? Uh, uh, my, with the, uh, excuse me, now you are seeking the death penalty. Obviously, this is not something that you take lightly. What made you decide to go after Pam Huff in seeking the death penalty in this case? So, um, one of the aggravating factors we're obviously able to rely on with the death penalty is the fact that she murdered for the insurance money. Uh, but I will specifically say that this case struck very deep uh, to our souls and our conscience uh, with a level of depravity not regularly seen. Uh, what I could say is that we have a person who not only murdered her friend, then mutilated the body, staged the scene, testified against an innocent man, and then once he was acquitted, went and murdered someone uh, in St. Charles County to prevent herself from being considered as a suspect. And I, I, if, if I can't pick uh, a case that was more depraved than that. This, this is it. When will she be arraigned? So um, it's on the uh, responsibility of the prosecutor's office to have her brought in from the Department of Corrections. Depending on how quickly their turnaround is, uh, we could anticipate as early as Friday, uh, but it, it certainly depends on whatever the Department of Corrections and whatever the courts are able to schedule us. So it, it could be a quick turnaround, as quick as Friday, but it could also go into next week. It's hard to say. Okay, thank you everyone. Thank you very much.